Okay, and all right, and we are uh, we are in the second installment of who knows how many lessons with Benny on some of his tricks, gimmicks, genre genre bits. I it's kind of a fluid, open sort of discussion here. And where did we leave off then? <clears throat> Let me see. Okay, so we were. We were talking about uh, this kind of an amalgam of different areas that are all linked together. One of the areas is you were talking about um, like getting a bluegrass sound, and I was talking about how the key of G is very good for that. Right. Here's your G major E minor pentatonic scale, and you can employ a technique like that, which is just pull-offs. Pull-offs and hammer-ons, that's it. Yeah, it's a real cheat, but it works well. Yeah. I don't call it a cheat anymore. I used to. It's just that I don't have, like, the kind of picking hand that I'd like to have in terms of speed. Yeah. So I rely on hammers and pull-offs. Okay. Uh, even, like, uh, some metal guys like Joe Satriani relies a lot on hammers and pull-offs. Oh, but really? he has a master to a degree of ridiculous. Okay. Um, all right. So, uh, but it also flows into this idea of playing, say, a folk song and getting those little hammers that you'd get. All right? Right. And it also flows into uh, extending chords out into really pretty sonorities. Like we demoed, I, I remembered this one we did at the last one. I took a G chord, and remember, all these notes are addable or subtractable to okay. your chord. So I took the G, I removed the, the root, which gives me E, which is, if uh, you count up, one, two, three, four, five, six, E okay. is the sixth, although I would, I would insist that it's a thirteenth. Okay. All right. And the reason why is, and academia should really wake up to this, is that when you present a scale in terms of harmony, it's not stepwise. It's not like do, re, mi, fa, sol, la. You jump in thirds. Do, mi, sol, ti, re, fa, la. Okay. All right? So to get that E note, you could count up six adjacent steps. Do, re, mi, fa, sol, la, ti, uh, do, re, mi, fa, sol, la. Right. right? And that's one, two, three, four, five, six. Mm -hmm. Or you could go do, mi, sol, that's one, three, five. Mm -hmm. Do, mi, sol, ti is seven. Mm -hmm. We haven't gotten to la yet, which is the, what we call the six. Mm -hmm. Do, mi, sol, ti, Re, Fa, La. One, three, five, seven, nine, eleven, thirteen. Right. That is the correct way to say it. So no such thing really as a six there, chord. We've, a I know we've had this discussion before, and 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 you have claimed there just there really isn't. There should be no designation for that. It pisses me the hell off. <laughs> like all these like smart ass guys that won't bother to look at the simplicity of things first, the real basic basic, mm -hmm. and just accept. Oh yeah, we're wrong about this. Yeah. Because chord naming is just so hodgepodge, it's ridiculous. Yeah. I mean, I think if I set, I have a basic, like, system for chord naming, based on just simply that, you know. But uh, I think with a little bit of work, some of the oddball chord categories that don't fall into the system I, I have, if I did some scientific research on it, I, I bet I could come up with a complete system for once and for all. Well, does this present a problem when you're, like, playing with uh, decent musicians? You're playing with other decent musicians, will they refer to the chord as a sixth? Yeah, what I always tell my students is, look, I'm going to teach you the, the real scientific language of chord naming and stuff like this in, in music theory in general. I'm going to teach you the real science of it, and then when you talk to musicians, just remember that you have to speak their uh, less exact language. Right. So when they say six, just calculate 13. <laughs> You know, okay. and, and, and be nice and say, yeah, it's the six. You know, don't yeah. be an asshole about it. Yeah. Right? Sure. Okay. So anyway, these two chords I came up with the last time, I, I took the root off and it gave me an E, which is a 13. Okay. And then, so I'm left with this. Very specific sound, by the way. Beatles songs end with that. Oh, okay. You know? That's right. Let me get this a little better tuned. Okay, 
So, all right, so I have the 13, and now I want to add a 9, okay, which the easy way to find a 9, the easy way to find a 13 and the easy way to find a 9. To find a 13, you go to the fifth of the chord, okay. root third fifth. In, in the case of a G, it would be G, B, D, okay. all right, all right, G, B, D. There's a D right here. Right. And to get the, the 13 is a whole step away from the fifth. But that's where you tune. Right. So now, when you say you're adding a D, you already have a D. Yeah, this is a funny thing. Like some people, like say for the song "Good Riddance" by um, Green Day, you get so you get this G, and my you know then I teach my students, well, this is G, and they say, well, what's this then? And I say it's also G. Mm -hmm. Why? Because G has three notes in it, G, B, and D, all right? So in this configuration, I have G, B, D, G, D, G, okay? And in this configuration, I have G, B, D, G, B, G. All, both are valid parts of a G chord, right. either B or D, right? Okay. So, like that. So the thing that, it's, when it comes to chord playing on a guitar, there's a million ways to skin a cat. That's what it comes down to. Okay. All right? If you're into skinning cats, I'm not myself. I like to twirl them by the tails and throw I'm them. I'm a dog person. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so, getting back. Uh, so the easy way to find a 13 is go a whole step from the fifth of the chord. Okay. All right? To get a ninth, you go a whole step from the root. Now remember, I always say that, like, find higher... When you're dealing with upper partials, would be major 7, 9, 11, and uh, 13, right? Okay. You want to put them on the top of the house, okay. your build, building. You've played that before where you've, you've uh, done it in the lower part of... Totally different effect. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it's an effect, but it doesn't quite grab the full texture of the chord somehow. Mm -hmm. Like, if I put a ninth in the bass and a G, I'll get something muddy. <laughs> A lot of dissonance there. Right. But if I put the ninth here, yeah, much more pleasing. Right. Yeah. So in any case, uh, and now we're speaking of the ninth. So I eliminated the root by getting this uh, and getting the thirteen. To get the ninth, you raise the root a whole step, and again, keeping the rule that you should go higher rather than lower when you add these upper partials. So now I have this chord. Okay. Now I went to a C, and what I did was I made it a major 7 by taking this off, okay. C, E, G, B, right. right? And then I added a 13, remember the root 3rd, 5th, is G, add the 13 there, I put the two together and I get, so now I have this. Sound, right? this, and this is it is the plain vanilla. G and C, basic. Right. Now this you've heard a gazillion times, right? But this, you get some color out of it. Okay, technically what are those two chords named? Fuck. <laughs> Pardon my French. Uh, Alright, so we have a 9 and a 13, but because the naming system is all wrong, this is called a G69. G six nine, okay. All right. But it really is a G nine thirteen. Right. Yeah. yeah. Okay. This you can call a C major thirteen as the major seven and the thirteen. Okay. Technically, see this. This is a problem here with chord naming because these are both added notes. Um, there is no. We have the major seven, but there there is no nine in this chord. Okay. okay. So seven, nine, eleven, thirteen. And by the way, in major and uh, major chords, the seventh chords. Forget about the 11. Just forget it. Okay. All right. Um, the 11, actually, I won't go into it. It's too technical. Okay. All right. So we got a G6 9 and a C major 13. Okay. Technically, a real C major 13 has the 9 in it. Okay. All right. And this is one of the only placements of this chord because there's so many notes in it. You have six notes in it. And you need six strings. Okay. Going back to our theme then, so in folk music, you can, instead of getting the plain vanilla sound, you could get more uh, textural sensual sound. 
Now, where do you play the equivalent of the D? The D? A, a variation on the on the five. What I like to do is this one, which is. All right. So normally a D is here, right? right? Now this is an F sharp, right? I'm going to lose that F sharp and put it here, where my pinky is pointing. Okay. So I've got to reconfigure the chord. I'm going to replace my third with my middle finger. Grab this F sharp. That leaves an E open. Now, remember I said all the notes of the scale are allowable against the chord, so what I have here is a D add 9, very simple. D add 9, okay. And if I want to really announce the root, <coughs> I could grab it here. Oh, okay. Once all I've very pleasing chords to listen to. What, I'm sorry? All very pleasing chords. Yeah, oh no, you get a lot of texture from them. Yeah. yeah. And they don't, notice they don't sound particularly jazzy, like, say, uh, a chord like, uh, you know. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Um, which can, you know, sound a little tacky sometimes. Well, no, you could, you could easily, the other way, uh, you could easily imagine going from straight G, C, D, to the, the uh, your alternatives to them. Without, with it perhaps fitting into, you know, the, the uh, sort of theme or motif or whatever, of what your lyrics are. Right. Without them being completely foreign anyway. Now this is D here, add nine. All right. Now I said, if I want the thirteen, I got a nine. If I want the thirteen, I go a whole step from the fifth root, third, fifth. Right. Right. Well, if I go up a whole step, that's a B. Well, all I have to do is I have a D over here and a D over here, so I could eliminate this, and now I have my B ringing. So now. Oh, okay. So now what we'll get is kind of like a. With the B and the E strings, we'll get a, uh, what do you call it, pedal, pedal tones, constantly moving through the three chords. Oh, okay. So, uh, you know, in an odd way, sort of an equivalent of drones. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And by the way, this, uh, there's a great book by Aaron Copeland, the composer, forget the name of it, but... He talks to music students, but at a very basic level. This is called pan-diatonic harmony. Okay. Uh, the reason why is when you think about it, all right, a C scale is composed of seven notes, correct? Right. So now if I were to, let's say we allow the 11, the 11 in the chord. So I get C, E, G, B, D, F, A, okay. right? That's all seven notes of the scale, mm -hmm. right? Then if I do a D minor chord, I get, from the key of C, I get D, F, A, C, E, G, B, right? Well, wait a second, that's the same seven notes. So how is C different from D minor? Yeah. Right? The only difference is the root, the bottom note. So basically what you can do to play pan-diatonic music is hit a piano on the white keys, hit, hit like, say, a C, and then with your fist hit some other white keys and you'll have a pan-diatonic chord. I mean, that's the way, it, that's the truth. I mean, you can really? just pick anything, uh. you know. As well, <coughs> so that's the idea behind pan-diatonicism. But now, uh, repeat what you said about the, you're dropping the, you drop the root out? No. Uh, for what? Pan-diatonic yeah. harmony? No, no, you have to keep the root. Okay. That's, that's only, the only thing that defines the chord. Oh, okay. All right, so let's say I have a chord bunch, you know, like uh, this. All right, so I'm going to hit a C in the bass. This makes it a C something. Okay. Now I'm going to hit an F in the bass makes it an F something. These these guys are remaining the same. Yeah. Can't do the G. I'll carpal tunnel myself. Yeah. Here. <laughs> All right. So basically, in other words, with that fist, you punch the white keys. If you change the, the bottom note, C to F, you'll get a C something or an F something. Why is my... Okay, cancel. All right. So does that make sense? Mm-hmm. All right. The, the hardest part of all this is it's much, much easier to see on a piano than a guitar. That's oh, okay. really the hard part. You I'm going to have to, I have this electronic piano, you know. Play with it. You'll I learn need much to, about yeah, it. I need to, it, it, too often it is, it, I've got a cover for it, too often stuff is put on it. <laughs> right. I need to like strip that off. Yeah, okay, great. Yeah. Uh, as far as like the hammers and stuff in folk music, again, I'm hammering on various notes of the pentatonic scale.